Planet Labs went public and has dropped considerably. Should we be buying on the dip? Well, what's going on one and all? It's Seedling Space here, and today we are doing a deep dive analysis on Planet Labs. And I've been looking forward to this, so let's go. So as I mentioned, today we will be covering what Planet Labs is, what kind of products and services do they offer, as well as talk about how they got there. Then we'll take a closer look at their financials before talking about what y'all really want to know, which is, should you be buying their stock? But with that, let's go ahead and dive in. So according to their website, Planet provides daily satellite data that helps businesses, governments, researchers, and journalists understand the physical world and to take action. And Planet is driven by a mission to image all of the Earth's landmass every day and make global change visible, accessible, and actionable. But what does this mean? They use a large constellation of over 200 satellites with high quality cameras to image the earth and provide that data to their customers. And recently they hit headlines by going public via SPAC merger, which raised nearly $600 million in cash and evaluated them at $2.8 billion, which includes the cash raised. But before we get into where they are today, let's first take a trip down memory lane. So roughly 11 years ago in December of 2010, Planet Labs was born, although at the time it was named Cosmogia, but then later named Planet Labs. Anyways, you gotta forgive me for the butchering of the names which you are about to hear, but it was founded by Dr. Chris Boschusen, a space mission architect at NASA Ames Research Center, Dr. Will Marshall, who is also a scientist from NASA and currently runs Planet Labs as CEO, and Robbie Schindler, who like the other two was a scientist from NASA and currently acts as Planet's chief strategy officer. All three of them looked at the current way satellites were being developed, which was large complex systems, and they decided that they wanted to manufacture small efficiently built satellites. And just like Apple and Google, they started building their business right out of their California garage. I would like to point out that this NASA article mentions that the Ames Research Center first launched CubeSats back in December of 2006, which wasn't long before Planet Labs was founded, and it makes me wonder if they were developing the CubeSats back at NASA and transitioned that knowledge to the business world. But regardless, they launched their first satellite called Dove One in April of 2013. Then later in June of 2013, they had their first fundraise, which totaled 13 million. And following their round A, they conducted a round B raise in December of the same year, totaling 52 million. And then a year later, they launched their new satellite constellation called Flock from the ISS. Then in 2015, they performed their Series C funding round, raising over 100 million throughout the year. With that new cash, they were able to perform an acquisition on the Black Bridge Geospatial Companies, which added to their distribution channels, customer base, and more through their imagery expertise. Jumping ahead to April of 2017, Planet acquires Terabella from Google, which integrates Google's Skysat constellation and imagery into Planet's existing business. In the deal, Google takes an undisclosed equity stake in Planet. Then at the end of 2018, Planet performs another acquisition of Boundless Spatial, which is a geospatial software solutions company, which helped expand their business further into US government and commercial agricultural clients. Following their campaign of acquisitions, Planet raises another 168 million in their Series D funding round in February of 2019. They continued to thrive off that funding for two years until announcing in July of 2021 that they will go public on the stock market via a merger with DMY4. This deal will raise over 500 million in cash and equivalents to Planet at a valuation of 2.8 billion in the post-transaction evaluation. And this fundraise will accelerate Planet's growth in existing and new markets such as machine learning enabled data products. After raising the funds by going public, they turned their eyes towards acquiring Vandersat, which is a leader in advanced earth data and analytics. This acquisition aligns directly with their existing services, much like the previous acquisitions. But now that we are caught up, let's dive more into what exactly is their products and services. So Planet Labs designs and manufactures small CubeSat satellites that capture high resolution images of the earth. 
Their satellites can provide updated imagery of the entire Earth over time and provide that data to government and commercial customers like agriculture, forestry, mapping, and more. According to their website, they have 34,000 users with 700 customers, 200 partners, and over 65 countries. These are some impressive numbers, but let's take a look at their SEC filings and see if we can grab any additional insights. Since Planet has recently gone public, we don't have a lot of access to their financials just yet. However, they did post their quarter three results in one of the SEC filings. So starting with their quarter three highlights, they stated a revenue increase, customer count increase, and higher gross margins. And this all sounds well and good, but it is offset by their increased spending in research and development, contributing to a larger net loss. The CEO stated that the capital raise from going public will be used to expand Salesforce and grow their software organization to expand their analytics solution. Right off the bat, it's refreshing to see a space company already posting some solid revenue and with strong growth. Without lingering too long on the business highlights, I do want to turn your attention to two distinct points of interest to me. The first is their acquisition of Vanderset, which increases their analytics capabilities and creates a strong position in agriculture, as well as other domains like insurance, civil government, and finance. This aligns with the CEO's statement about growing their software organization for analytics solutions. Initially, it seemed that Planet Labs focused on the data capture and provider business, while leaving the customer to handle the analytics. Now it seems like they are building up the analytics products to offer a more holistic solution to customers who may not have the talent or personnel to do the analytics themselves. The second point of interest is the two new products, the fleet of satellites called Pelican and the data fusion with SAR to provide cutting edge data enhancement. These products strengthen their hold on the data capture analytics solution. And unlike how Rocket Lab is performing acquisitions to expand into new markets with a wider net, Planet is focusing on acquisitions which very closely aligns with their core business. Now hopping over to the income statement, we see 31.7 million in revenue with an increase in gross profit and gross margin as they become more efficient. Their nine months end actually shows us that their 2021 cost of revenue is lower than their previous years, which is a good sign of increasing efficiency. However, we also see a definite increase in research and development costs, as well as selling and administrative costs. These factors are expected as they focus on building up their analytics capabilities to hopefully win more business. Okay, so let's see just how much they are burning currently. So we see that they are at a burn rate of about 41 million per quarter. Although the negative 28 million loss from operations is more useful for seeing how profitable the business is, however, let's call it the 40 million burn rate. It also has 60 million in cash after quarter three. But let's, let's just assume that all their cash and equivalents is the nearly 600 million raised during the IPO. Then that gives them about 15 quarters before they run out, which is a fair amount of time. So with a solid foundation of market share in terms of revenue, plenty of cash on the books for research and development, and targeted acquisitions adding to their business line, I actually think that they are extremely competitive compared to other space companies on the market right now. So enough with their finances. Let's talk about why you're here, which is... Is it time to buy? To answer that, let's take a look at their current price. As of recording this, the share price is $5.98 compared to the IPO price of $10. Now, this is quite a drastic drop that I believe is influenced by general pessimism in the space market. Looking at other stocks starting around the August timeframe, everyone seems to be heading south for the winter. Even Kathy Wood's Space Exploration ETF in the bottom right shows a definite decline across many of the companies. So we have a space company, e.g. Planet, with an existing solid fundamental foundation caught up in the space market's general pessimistic trend. But does this mean that investors are inadequately pricing the company? Well, based on their quarter four estimates, their revenue is projected to be between 35 to 37 million which means that the total 2021 year revenue will hit 130 million while trading with a market cap of just 1.57 billion. So let's take a look at the price to sales ratio, which is market cap divided by the 12 month revenue. 
For Planet's 2021 year, the ratio is about 12.1, which is relatively low compared to the other space companies that have gone public this year. Although generally speaking, that ratio is not really good in terms of the whole market, for the space companies is lower than most of the other ones that have gone public this year. So comparatively speaking, this company is starting to look decent, but what about other indications do we have that it's a good deal? The most intriguing thing to me is that within less than a week, three different insiders bought a large amount of shares totaling more than 1.3 million. And this happened just a few days ago. And now, and this indicates conviction by insiders that the price is undervalued by putting their own money on the line in the hopes that it's gonna go up. Personally, I think the pessimism in the market is going to continue for the space industry as some of the evaluations come back to reality. But after this research, Planet Labs seems to be a very interesting investment opportunity, and personally, I've added it to my portfolio. But of course, don't just take my word for it, you should do your own research and make sure that it's right for your portfolio before investing. Especially since I'm just some guy on the internet who did some research for you. But I didn't cover everything, and you may find some other information that can you know, make you believe something different. But for now, that is the end of this analysis. I hope you found it valuable. And if you want to see more videos like this one, please like, comment, and subscribe. And this is Seedling Space, signing out.